So today we're going to look at custom primitive data. But before looking at it, let's see what problem it elegantly solves. Say for instance, I have these three shapes and I want to give them a different color each, say red, green, blue. The usual way we would do so is we would create our material shape. We would create a, a vector three, convert that to a parameter color shape, put that in there. And then we could either set the set a default color here, which will leave us black. We can go to all three shapes, we can, which are all being selected, and we can give them the same material. Now in order to change that material, there is no easy way to do so in, in the defaults we would create a material instance. We would have to apply that to one material. Open it. And then we can change the color here. However, if we apply the same material instance here, every change propagates to the to each object. So we'd have to duplicate this, apply the second one here, and then we can change and open it. Again, we can then change this to, to blue. That requires creating multiple material instances. What we can do instead is use custom primitive data. So if we create another material, this is our material, custom primitive data for the shape. Again, we do similar. We create a vector three parameter, press three and click. We'll convert this to our parameter and just call this color. and we'll put that into the base color. But when you go down here on the actual node, you can click custom primitive data. That then opens up different channel names, red, green, blue, and alpha. And the full vector comes out as the base color. Now what we can do is if we select all three objects, and we give them the same material. What we have access to is a custom primitive data. So this data is stored on the object itself. So we click on the cube and if we custom primitive data you see that that color which we had created is here. So if I click on this, now I have access to the color and I can put that as red or pink and that goes to pink. If I click on this, I can again click on the custom primitive data defaults. I can put that as blue and if I click on this, Again, custom primitive data. And I can give that green. So with one material, we can change the custom primitive data on each object where the custom primitive data defaults are stored on the actual mesh itself or the object itself rather than in the material. And that information will then come through here and be used as a custom primitive data. You can add more. So for instance, if we wanted to change the metallic, specular, roughness, we could create another one, convert that to a parameter, call that metallic, specular, roughness. 
use the custom primitive data and we can name the channels. So if this is our metallic, this is our specular, this is our roughness, we can join them up. save the material. Now when we go back here, we also on the custom primitive data, if we again just click on the object, go down to the render, we now have an extra custom primitive data object. So we've got color which we're using and now we have this so we can change the Metallic specular roughness. So this isn't actually working correctly. And the reason is, if you go back to your material, you see that there is an index. So the custom primitive data is using index 0, 1, 2, 3. This is still set at 0, 1, 2, 3. What we need to do is we need to set it to the next index after the end of this data. So if you come here, it says primitive data index. We can change this one to four. Now the primitive data index four, five, six, and seven will correspond to the metallic specular and roughness. So we apply, we save, we go here, and now we have two separate custom primitive data defaults. We have the color, which we're using here, which we can just change, say, to a yellow. But we can also change this data. So we could click individually. We can change the metallic to, to one. We can change the specular. 0.5 and we can change the roughness to 1. Oh, it doesn't make sense. 0.2. And again, we can do the same with, with all the rest. So we have access to the metallic. and so on. And that allows us to be able to change data, custom primitive data on a per object basis by using just one material instead of having to create multiple materials or multiple material instances or dynamic materials. And this, and this is a very simple approach. You can also change this data via blueprints. So if we look at this blueprint actor, which is just a static mesh with a pyramid and a collision box. And in the static mesh, if we give it our M custom primitive data material that we've been using. And in the box, if we say, if we take advantage of the on component begin overlap, say the other actor is equal to the player pawn. We will change the color of the static mesh to red. So we'll take the static mesh and we'll say set custom primitive data and we'll set it as a as a vector four. So that will use zero, one, two, three index starting from zero. And then we can just make a vector four and we'll set it to, to red. Um, if we take advantage of the on component end overlap and we'll set it back to, to green. 
Let's just copy everything. Put that as zero. And we'll put this as one. So RGB, red, green, blue. And again, we start at index zero. So we go back to the, so I've added the actor here. See what happens. So now if we go and we overlap, it turns red. And when we leave, it goes back to green. Turns red, goes back to green. So there's an example of using custom primitive data to be able to change the colors of a material.